I didn't know he can't even get a job as a. I I I wrote I read in your notes that you yeah. said he, he can't even get a job as a volunteer or. That's yeah. crazy. He's like one of the most, like he must be one of the most cited scholars out there. And yeah. Fucking hell, that's crazy. So I'll put a link to these interviews be- below. I've talked about this. It was done. Reality asserts itself with Paul J when he worked the Real News. These are from 2015. <laughs> it's like an eight-part Norman Finkelstein. Um, interview and so I mean Norman Finkelstein had a few issues academically right one was with his first book that he got you know kicked out of the university that he really liked then he goes and teaches no, he didn't get kicked out he didn't get the ten share I because... believe that's the second university I believe oh, really? that he goes I believe this part someone please clarify maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm right but then yeah then once he goes to DePaul University in Chicago that's where they deny him tenure and I think this was based on his second book. Um, so the Holocaust industry, where it talks about, you know, Holocaust survivors being, I believe, ripped off um, and all that. That's that's kind of his arguments. And they're being, you know, used by others to make money. I believe I haven't read that book. But yeah, after that one. So then he says after this, I mean, because he had a moment of fame before that. While he was at DePaul, that's when he was traveling all around the world and everything. But then this book and apparently... During the Israel-Lebanon uh, war, he says, we are all Hezbollah. And people are like, why didn't you say we're all Lebanon? And he says, because Hezbollah were the ones fighting back the Israelis. So that's why that talk at a rally, he said, I'm Hezbollah. So after this and the tenure thing, he's out of university. So after this, he says the only job he managed to get was teaching in Turkey once a week per semester, I believe, or per month. So he would fly from New York there. He said none of the schools, of course, and the East Coast. He says, you know, I stopped getting even invitations for talks and all all this. And then he says, you know, I couldn't get a job at a post office or anything. And Paul is like, OK, come on, you're a bit exaggerating and all that. He's like, I applied for volunteer teaching to students, to like not university students, to students in Chicago and even got rejected at that. And then he's and then the main point that he starts making is that like, but hey, I understand not only am I trouble for like the university, if you get me the amount of backlash that you get, which I think is true. No one wants that kind of shit at work, unfortunately, most people. But then he's like in academia. University was to want that kind of shit. The, the sense to be accepted in academia, that was the whole fucking point. Like, yeah, of course you don't want to, you don't want somebody like that in, you know, in Disney Corporation Board of Directors. That makes sense. But in university, that's just, that's real. Like when, I hate that term, but when people talk about cancel culture and all that shit, this is real cancel yeah. culture. Where they cut off your livelihood and yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, and then he goes on to add that, yeah, he can, he doesn't have anything to offer like other people in academia. Like, you know, he can't write them a book review or something like that. So not, he can't, not, not only is he trouble, he can't do anybody any favors. So he's been completely like ostracized from academia. But and it's yeah, surprising, I, but not surprising. He's not, It's, yeah, in a way. And I guess he's not a, you know, I know quite a few people who, when they get ostracized from a certain community, let's say from liberals, they go full on conservative and they throw themselves and like they ignore the problems with that side. But he's not that kind of person. He does point out, for example, misogyny in the Islamic world or, you know, the problems with LGBT. So that's the thing. He doesn't have any, because he's basically, because he's basically criticizing everybody equally in a right manner so he's not welcomed anywhere really that's that's really fucked up yeah but it's it's, funny you say that he exactly says that he says like a lot of these people in these departments are more leftist (laughs) and more progressive uh than i am but of course i mean you know being being labeled a holocaust denier is kind of the end of it (laughs) you know he's like when he's talking about the chicago like kids he's like i understand (laughs) they run back home to their to their parents like mommy mommy look my professor is famous like showing on google and then the first thing that shows up is like you know holocaust denier norman (laughs) finkelstein like he's like i understand no administrator no university want that which is not a good thing but 
that's how the world the work world is unfortunately no yeah no one wants extra would, trouble and shit sure sadly i would say that only i mean he i i like to point that out just to emphasize that he's a child of a two yeah. holocaust survivor two. so uh, one of them, I think, ran away from Auschwitz or something yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. Ho- I mean, his parents were in multiple concentration camps, and so he and he both sides of his family never, exterminated both sides of it. Yeah, yeah, and he has never ever claimed there has been any exaggeration with the Holocaust event. He has just talked about the zionism like it's it's just a different like it's a 20 year different like 10 year different yeah. like you know it just starts after that what, what he covers so it's really unfair and it's his other genuinely... book his other book i believe um is about people taking advantage of holocaust yeah, but, uh, survivors yeah, yeah. even sure. but yeah. the people who are taking advantage are in his view are zionists yeah, yeah. You know? so in a way he's ba- yeah like that's why they don't like like you know he goes after them where where they're really wrong yeah. like you know he, he calls them i think uh, basically yeah they they you know they they use holocaust tragedy as a way to uh, get money off of germany yeah, yeah. land and all that yeah. no exactly 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 but yeah i mean so people need to go watch this eight part yeah, like interviews yeah. with norman finkelstein I mean, i'm gonna definitely try to go online and buy all of his books and uh i don't know he should have started a sub stack or something i guess nah, i don't think he, he shows up on the gray zone every now and then sure but i mean no, just no, talk I think, yeah uh, yeah i i mean but I he rarely what... comments about anything else except that like he I really continue. yeah he really keeps his like comments to you know the area where he's a scholar oh, he's an academic yeah, yeah that's the thing so focused on one year yeah anyways that's a very sad, sad update. Yeah. yeah, I mean, with the volunteer thing, it was just shock, but super if, awesome. If you, take, if you take anything away from this progressive update episode, just you buy everything Finkelstein. <laughs> yeah, buy everything knowing Finkelstein. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up this episode? Uh, no. Oh, uh, yeah, there was an interesting video on...